Some of the terrorists have found uh, safe haven in Canada. Canadian Prime Minister has this uh, 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 way of just uh, coming out with some outrageous allegations without any supporting proof. I'm not surprised that sometime uh, Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau comes out with uh, outrageous unsubstantiated uh, allegations. Yesterday he had gone and given a rousing welcome to a, somebody who have uh, associated with the Nazis in the past on the Second World War. You met with a foreign minister, Jay Shankar, if you can tell how was the conversation? Uh, very good to always to meet uh, my friend uh, uh, Dr. Jay Shankar. Uh, we just had a small conversation as to uh, how we strengthen the Sri Lankan relationship and also I have invited him to visit Sri Lanka for the Ayora. Uh, he promised that uh, he will try his level best uh, to make it and, and to take the uh, country forward and the great relationship that we have to strengthen that. Uh, sir, my obvious question is there are diplomatic tensions between Canada and India that is ongoing because of Trudeau's allegation which India has obviously rejected. Uh, what will you say on that and on India's response since we know that Sri Lanka has to suffer from various forms of terrorism in the last decade? Yeah, we have always suffered and some of the terrorists have found a uh, safe haven in Canada. Canadian Prime Minister has this uh, uh, way of just uh, coming out with some outrageous allegations without any supporting proof. The same thing they did for Sri Lanka, uh, a terrible uh, total lie about saying that Sri Lanka had a, uh, a genocide. Everybody knows there was no genocide in this in in, uh, in our country. And I saw yesterday he had gone and given a rousing welcome to a somebody who have uh, um, associated with the Nazis in the past on the Second World War. So uh, this is questionable, and we have uh, we have dealt it in the past. Uh, we have uh, categorically rejected those outrageous allegations. So uh, I'm not surprised that sometime. Uh, Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau comes out with uh, outrageous, unsubstantiated uh, allegations. Uh, so, since you mentioned about his comment on the genocide, uh, we know Canadian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka was summoned. Uh, how do you think that that statement has affected the relationship between Sri Lanka and Canada and if you can talk about the wider Indo-Pacific? Yeah, that has uh, actually affected our relationship. People to people, we have good con contact. Foreign Ministry has a different take on that. Global um, Ministry of uh, Global Affairs has very clearly said that Sri Lanka doesn't, did not go through a genocide. Whereas the Foreign Minister, as a politician, stand up and says that genocide had taken place. That itself is contradictory to each other. That doesn't help. You know, I don't think anyone should <laughs> poke into their nose into the other countries and tell as to how we should govern our country. We we love our country more than anyone else. That's why we are in our country. So therefore, uh, we are not uh, very happy about that relation, uh, that statement at all. So basically, I think that's what is very important. Iora, we are saying that Indian Ocean identity and uh, strengthen the regional architecture. We have to look after our region. We need to work together. Uh, that's how we can create a peaceful environment there. And we should not be dictated by anyone else as to how we should conduct our affairs. Uh, so there are reports of Chinese research vessel is scheduled to be docked in Sri Lanka in October named as Xi Yan 6. Uh, if you can tell us something about that since we know that India in the past has raised concern because of its security and how does Sri Lanka assures New Delhi that its security interest in the Indian Ocean will be? Yeah, that's a conversation going on for some period of time. India has uh, has uh, expressed its concerns for a long period of time. But we have now come out with a SOP, Standard Operate Procedure. When we were making that, we consulted uh, many of our friends, including India. So as long as they comply with the SOP, we have no problem. But if it doesn't comply with the SOP, we have a problem. So therefore, uh, um, as far as I know, we have not given the permission to come to Sri Lanka during the month of October. So there are negotiations going on, but Indian security concerns, which are legitimate, are very, very important for us. We have always told that because we want to keep our region as a zone of peace. Uh, so another point of concern is the fisherman issue between India and Sri Lanka. We saw during the President's visit this year the discussion be between the Prime Minister and the President. Our Prime Minister telling the President uh, that you should see this matter with a humane approach. So if you can talk about that, how is this going to uh, resolve? Oh, it has to be humane from both sides. Our fishermen also, their livelihood, 
uh, but uh, therefore we need to sit and talk about it. Uh, I, I think Sri Lanka and India has a history of sitting and negotiating and resolving problems. You do, it do comes just like in a family. So we are very confident that if we can sit and talk about it and find a uh, solution which is win-win, mm, which is good for Sri Lanka, good for India and good for our relationship. Uh, so, I know tough times, uh, we, we also have a lot of pressure from our fishermen, uh, particularly from the uh, Tamil-speaking fishermen in North and East, because that's their livelihood. But, uh, but as similarly, it's also livelihood for the people in uh, some of the fishermen in your country. So, I'm sure we will sit, we'll negotiate, we'll discuss this and find a solution which is acceptable to all. So, what is the current situation in your country right now since we know that Sri Lanka has dealt with the economic crisis in the last few time and uh, what will you see on India's assistance? Yeah. Uh, the, really, the situation is much better compared to last year. I'm sure as a journalist you would know the inflation has come down, tourism has picked up, rupee has stabilized, reserves have risen. Uh, but if you look at carefully, I was still in this morning when I met with uh, some senior officials of the UN. Uh, there is a, when I was advocating to have a uh, financial architecture, we were lucky because by the time all uh, multilaterals coming and giving the money, we had a huge uh, gap. But it is India who played and bridged that gap by coming out with 3.9 billion worth of um, various form of assistance to us. Uh, so we are very grateful. I think India can be can proudly claim a great part of. Uh, 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 great part of um, credit for what we have achieved today. So, last question in terms of trade relationship, what can we expect between the two countries? Trade is very important because we we are looking at India growing, uh, one of the fastest growing, largest economies, big economies, and India growing, and that growth path is uh, very important. Uh, together with that, the region must grow. So we have seen a big opportunity here. So that's the idea. We are trying to, in electricity, renewable energy, tourism, uh, port, shipping, connectivity. We are looking at uh, forging closer relationship with your country. And I'm sure uh, we will we'll be able to do that and that will be better for both countries. And we want a good region with prosperity, peace and harmony among all. So. As I always say, until everyone is safe, no one is safe. It's true for the region. So we want a good neighbor, prosperous neighbor. India is going that path. We want to go with them.